one of the ways that history is told most truly in this house is through the 5,000 plus cookbook collection that exists in it. I am a cookbook author, a poet, and the tremendously proud daughter of Alice Randall, my cookbook co-author and the editor of this year's food edition of the Oxford American. Reckoning comes before reconciliation and it often begins at the table. I hope that the 2021 food issue of the Oxford American is both an act of reckoning and a gesture of reconciliation. So mom, how do you, I don't think we've ever actually talked about how you went about selecting who you wanted to be in the issue. Well, in some ways it's like a dinner party. Yeah. <laughs> that you need a variety of voices and people that uh, are going to be an interesting conversation with each other. You want some old friends and you want some new faces. I've also always loved that Eugenia Collier story about sweet potatoes. Yeah. And, you know, fascinated by your grandfather's old friend, great grandfather's old friend, Ralph Ellison and the Invisible Man and everything he had to say about sweet potatoes. Yeah. It seemed important to me to have a sweet potato section. Yeah. That's just one of our like theme, ele theme, theme ingredients in our life too, generally. Absolutely. I feel. <laughs> <laughs> I just love this shows her so much who she was and okay so this is so there's my Nana Joan Joan Marie Bontemps Williams and there's Avon Williams my grandfather he was this uh, amazing state senator who she supported and again doing the civil rights uh, doing all of his civil rights work and then this picture is my grandparents just like being sweet together this is just them I love that look at her Joan Williams' nana was a university librarian, first at Fisk University, then Tennessee State University. She was the wife of a civil rights lawyer. Her pleasure was the cookbook collection, her ability to cook for her friends when they could not enter restaurants commonly yeah. in Nashville, that she would turn her home into a restaurant. She left you her collection of cookbooks. Yeah. How many books do you think that was when you got it? The 2,500 maybe? It's close to that. It's right around there, yeah. From the time I was in fifth grade to the time I went to college, one of my most important activities outside of school was cooking. These are the three cookbooks that were the foundation of my cooking life. Some of these, you know recipes from each of them yes. that you learned from me. And it was wonderful to come upon them all in Joan's collection. I love my godmother. This is me in France with my godmother Mimi eating ice cream just uh, when I was six years old. So our cookbook, we dedicated to my godmother Mimi, your best friend from college. I already thought I had the biggest cookbook collection of anyone I knew and then it more than doubled when Mimi gave me her cookbooks it was really moving to me that in my Japanese, international, eccentric, New York-based godmother's cookbook collection that found its way to Nashville was a copy of Date with the Dish, a book that meant so much to my grandmother, that means so much to black culinary legacy in America, that my godmother bought one. It's just kind of extraordinary to me that we have these two iterations of the same book bought by these two different women who mean so much to me in terms of how I understand food and ways of being in the kitchen and all of that. This collection is both uh, centered in a black, feminine, southern collecting practice, but it has been amplified by Mimi's Japanese and French inflected collecting practice. Mm -hmm. And then it has been further evolved by your own both hyper-local and radically global collecting practice. And I've, I've, I've loved seeing it all evolve.
I love that too. I also love, you know, the different work that the collections have done. I think about how Nana won. It was her. It was a way that she traveled. It was a way that she showed love. Um, it was part of her professional practice as well. You get to know her in the books, but also by the titles. You know, for me, this is my inheritance. You know, you think about nature and nurture and like who you are. And I think about like how she collected, what she collected, what's in these books. And my godmother, who's been such an important part of raising me. And then I get to know them. The books are architecture yeah. and inspiration. And what we, they're not for us is weirdly precious. That in the sense that we actually cook from and use all of them and we don't attempt to keep them in any way pristine. No. They are part of our lived experience.